Hi, Dr. Russ here. Today we're with Monica, who has some issue in her right hip and lumbar spine. Sounds like maybe some muscle issue, potentially some instability, so let's have a look. We're looking here, getting a sense of the basic structure. Everything looks basically normal. This is the area of pain right here. I think a little redness, maybe you were rubbing that before. Mm -hmm. Can you slump real good? Yeah, really round your lower back. Uh -huh. Can you? A little pinch of pain when I do that. Right here. Mm -hmm. Can you round any more? That's his. Okay, so she's not moving much here. As you can see, her upper lumbar spine is rounding a little bit, and then her lower lumbar spine is not really engaging much. Can you roll a little further forward on your sit? There you go. Okay, so that does move. And that's good. Come on up straight. I want you to cross your arms in front of you like this. So that gives me a bit of a handle that I can feel the movement of the sacroiliac joint. So one finger on her sacrum, one finger on her ilium, so it's crossing the SI joint and I turn her toward me. I turn her in the direction of that SI. And I want to feel for relative movement between those two structures. And that feels good. And here on the other side, I'm going to turn her to the left. Good. And let's feel that right side again. And she's helping with the movement, which is typical. It's actually, now that I've felt the left side, I can tell that the right side is actually a little bit stuck. Yeah, are you yeah. feeling that? Yep. Mm -hmm. feel and sometimes people get aching and overwork in a muscle when those muscles cross a stuck joint. And even though it hurts to stretch and counterintuitively, what needs to happen is mobilization of that stuck joint, which will take pressure off of the muscle that's giving, giving pain. So we're going to feel for L5 movement now. So that pointer finger here is on the fifth lumbar and my middle finger on the sacrum and we're going to do side bending. So as I tilt her to the right, I want to feel the spinous process of L5 moving to the left. It's moving away from the midline and then vice versa. So Checking L4, 5 here and L3, 4. So feeling up the lumbar spine one vertebra at a time, trying to get a sense of if there's anything stuck in the lumbars or is it more in the pelvis. And it feels like it's more just here in the pelvis. So if there's issue in the SI joint, we need to check the hip itself as well. So let's have you facing down here, okay? So just really gently, She's laying a nice, got herself laying in a nice neutral position, but I want this hip to be slightly away from midline, which is going to open up the ball and socket joint just a little bit and give us a little bit more space. Just feeling this easy rotation in the hip. That is nice. External rotation, internal rotation, plenty of range of movement. And our favorite sacroiliac joint play assessment to lift and jiggle the leg. And usually we can really feel where the stuckness is right here. Okay, so I'm zeroing in a little bit more. And based on the location of that and the depth of it and the texture of it, what I've got right here under my finger is the lower border of the gluteus maximus muscle. So that attachment here on the pelvis starts here and runs all the way to about here. And so all of this is glute max muscle, and it's going to insert on her right side on the greater trochanter, and here her left one comes down to about here. So it's a huge muscle. It's this whole thing here on her left side. We're focused today on the right side. But otherwise, the movement of the hip joint itself feels really good, and I think we have a green light to start unlocking this SI joint by releasing the gluteus maximus tendon here and following this tension wherever it leads us in the hip region and then probably going to do a little bit of stretching and opening between the iliac crest and the lumbar spine here. And if we think about these fibers of the glute max and they come up this way, that's going to blend with the thoracolumbar fascia on the other side and the latissimus on the opposite side. So we're probably going to want to do a little bit of left-sided thoracolumbar work as well. But as usual, we want to start in the area of complaint. So let's get started here. 
start a skin level as usual and just kind of giving some gentle mobilization and saying hello to the skin in this whole area from the tip of the sacrum and going distal and lateral this way and then across the sacral fascia crossing the midline to the lower ribs on the left side and we want to be careful in a lumbar spine we don't really want to put a lot of direct pressure going straight in we want our pressure to be more on the surface or in the deeper tissues but not directly extending the spine that doesn't feel good for most people and so we're ready to start here is where we had found our issue before so i'm just taking my thumbs and i'm working along the edge of the sacral apex just about an inch at a time Mm -hmm. Is that sensitive there? Yeah, it's really okay. interesting because I came in and I feel like the, the pain is more shooting here, mm -hmm. but where you're working feels very tight. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to lighten up, slow down? Nope, it's okay. Right. okay, good. A couple deep breaths. Good. Yeah. As always, feeling for areas of congestion, stagnation. Trigger points on the attachment sites, trigger points in the muscle belly. This is all myofascial release. And this area is really interesting for so many reasons. Um, for one, it bears the weight of the entire body. For two, that superficial fascia is thickest here, uh, more than anywhere in the body. And that's that layer between the skin and the muscle that is super important. It's not just fatty tissue that we need to press through it's supportive, structural, highly vascular, sensitive tissue that dysfunctions on its own and needs to be addressed. So I think where a lot of people who do body work miss the boat is by um, neglecting to work that layer and just going straight for the muscle. But these fascial layers are super important. So as I follow her glute max coming out and down onto the thigh bone, that big bump called the greater, greater trochanter, she's nodding her head like, yeah, there's something there as well. That's some deep, intense work. And we don't want to do that continuously without giving the patient a little bit of a break and let their nervous system integrate what just happened. Good. So coming up here now, can you lift your tummy? Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Thank you. We got it. And we're going to work this line here. So there's her spine. There's the paraspinal muscle. Here's This is all transverse and oblique abdominal muscle out here. And right in here where those two planes meet, the transverse and oblique abdominal and the vertical paraspinal muscle is usually an area where you can get some nice results by mobilizing. Oh, yeah. Very tight. Very right there. Okay. Good. Deep breath for me, Monica. Good. Breathe out. Nice. What I really want to feel in the fascial texture is a smooth transition from gluteal over the iliac crest to the lumbar and then up into the ribs. And here where the rib cage is, is a lot more stable because of the rib cage. Here where the pelvis is a lot more stable because the pelvis is a solid ring. And here in the lumbar spine, it's a lot less stable, but the tissue texture should be really pretty consistent. And that's what I'm feeling for. Good. So let's come around and look at this left side too. So again, keeping in mind that fascial plane from the right glute max across the sacral fascia to the left thoracolumbar fascia. And that leads me right here. And I'm thinking this would be an opportune time for some cupping. Do you mind if I use a cup? That's all right. Good. So her skin 
has got some oil on it. I'm putting a little shea butter on the cup because I want it to glide. And some dynamic cupping here. It's gentle. And when you've used cups for a little while, you can actually start to feel the texture of the tissue through the cup, and that's where it's stagnant, is right there. So I'm going to increase the suction just a little bit. And you can see her skin being pulled up into the cup. It's going to leave a little purple mark. But this is me mobilizing the tissue, saving my hands a little bit. I could pinch this with my fingers and lift it, but the cup does a really nice job. So you can see I'm almost like using a rolling pin on dough, getting it moving and moving the fluid through. And I want to feel that tissue texture lighten up just a little bit. Good. And while we're here with the cup, let's come back to this gluteus here and do a little work on that superficial layer right here. So I'm below the crest of her ilium. I'm definitely in the hip and not the lower back. And we're crossing that crest. And as we come up into the lower back, we want to change direction here and go more longitudinally coming out along the rib cage. So kind of giving the outline of the whole quadratus lumborum muscle here and coming all the way down to that initial area where we felt that sacroiliac joint being stuck. And there you go. Good. Okay. So the next piece, I think, since we're dealing so much with iliac stuff, is we're going to want to work these iliac crest tissues. The insertion of the QL and especially the internal and external oblique abdominal right here, and that's best done with you laying on your side. So let's get you laying on your left side, okay? Okay, I've got our patient comfortably side lying, oil on my hands, lets me glide on the skin, and the first thing we want to do is just identify our structures. The crest of her ilium here, the anterior superior iliac spine right there, and so from the ASIS coming up and around feels really actually pretty smooth along the iliac crest until we get right here. That's where I start to get a little bit sticky. And so we're not going to overwork that just now. We're just getting started. Our internal oblique coming up this way. Our external oblique coming down this way. And it's me coming down this way where I really catch on to that tendon. So for my own knowledge and purposes, I'm thinking external oblique is the muscle we're working on. Yeah, and that's really kind of tending to pull this hip back. So we're not going to do anything forceful, but what I want to do is get a little more length into this external oblique. So I'm going to reposition her so we can get a little bit of forward rotation of that hip. So Monica, I want you to straighten your bottom knee and we're going to tuck the top leg. Yeah, it's kind of a classic chiropractic side posture position, um, but we're not going for the SI joint. We're not going to adjust a vertebra here. What we're going for is some external oblique movement. And let's get this right arm up over your head. Mm -hmm. And as you breathe in, I want you to kind of expand the front ribs here. Okay. Does that feel like a stretch? Does that feel okay? Yeah, the stretch is upper okay. back, so okay. it feels fine. Good. This isn't irritating your lower back, though? No. Good. Okay. Deep breaths in. We've got her external oblique nice and open now. And here is a little bit of a pinch and lift on this stuck tendon. This is a really common area for people to get stuck. Um, personal story. I was paddling in a kayak yesterday and I got home and my back was tight. So uh, I laid down and did this to myself and it felt better like right away. One of the benefits of being a chiropractor. Okay, deep breath here and out. Yeah, so right here where we're at that's so sensitive is that junction between the two layers of the external oblique and that superficial fascia. So 
So that superficial fascia is not inert tissue. It's really important. And sometimes that's where the issues lie. And based on her response here and um, the hyperacuity of the sensation in that area, I would say this is more in the fascia than in the muscle. And, um, and that loosened her up pretty nicely, just that little bit of mobilization. So let's palpate now back along the iliac crest and so much smoother. Really good. And the ability of a patient's tissues to respond and let go and change in texture um, over the course of a few minutes is mostly a matter of hydration and circulation. And when a person's tissues have been tight for a long time and that tightness impedes the circulation through, the tissues can literally dry out and decondition and then they don't really change very quickly. So the fact that that changed pretty quickly is a really good sign. Can you lay in your tummy one more time? So let's check this again and see where we're at. And that hip still moves really nicely. And our SI joint play feels good. And I think we're gonna call this a treatment. How's that feel for you? It feels really good. It feels good. Okay. Thanks for coming in today. I really appreciate it.